What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Dark Envoy, which actually I've been fairly pleased with. I've been playing the game now for about an hour and a half, two hours, in that region somewhere, and honestly I think this little game has a lot of heart. It has impressed me so far. This is clearly an RPG that's made sort of like chasing that, I think, Divinity 1 uh, sort of vibe where it's definitely like a low budget RPG that's trying to kind of like swing for the fences And I think they may have accomplished it in more ways than I thought now These are just my thoughts after playing the first couple hours. It may get a lot worse from here It's impossible to tell however I found the game to actually be pretty fun, have some cool deterministic crafting, it's had some fun boss fights, it requires a lot of interaction, it's not an easy game that's just going to give you a pass for showing up. In that way, it reminds me a lot of an old game that I played called Arclash Legacy that was very much the same, where it was like a high micro RTS RPG that was almost like doing kind of World of Warcraft boss fights, like raid fights over and over again for all the bosses. This game kind of has a little bit of that vibe going forward as well and I've been having a good time with it so let's take a look at the game let's see if it's for you let's see if it's something that you want to support and then later on in the video I can see the question always comes up and we're going to talk about this because I cover a lot of RPGs and I've been thinking that I need to kind of like talk about this at some point or another it's the the concept is going to need to be broached uh, but we're going to talk about why it is you should support RPGs like this in a world where Baldur's Gate 3 exists because inevitably whenever I play a title like this that's going to be one of the big questions that comes up is someone will be like well in what world would I want to play this instead of playing Baldur's Gate 3 you know what I mean because Baldur's Gate 3 has that super high production budget it's going all wild and crazy it's like shattering the market right now and being super famous doing all that fun stuff like, why would I want to play any other RPG if I can just get thousands of hours of fill uh, from that dear old game? And I'll go ahead and give you an answer to that a little bit later on and what my logic is in still covering titles like this one in a world uh, where Baldur's Gate exists. So down below, you will find a link to the title just in case you wanted to get it for yourself. Uh, it will be listed down there with a Steam code. Where are you going right now? Are you pathfinding weird? Or is he blocked off? He might be blocked off. This guy in the back has been a headache this entire time. On top of that, if you wanted to hang out with me live on the internet most days of the week, I create a lot more content over on Twitch.tv that you're missing out on. All you gotta do is slide through my Discord and I ping it whenever I go live, usually in the afternoons. Sometimes, well, not even afternoon anymore. I've been going live at like 11 or 12 in the morning most days because there's just not that much indie stuff to work on anymore that meets... The criteria for what I find to be like entertaining, just things that suit my fancy. Let's dive on in. So what am I doing right now? I'm in an optional location. And I think the best place we start with is like, what is Dark Envoy? Uh, Dark Envoy is a party-based, real-time RPG. Uh, honestly, kind of a dungeon crawler from what I've seen too. There's definitely inspiration here from something like Icewind Dale, which leaned much more heavy in kind of like a crunchy, dungeon-crawly, limited narrative way than something like Baldur's Gate did. That's not to say that this game does not have a narrative. In fact, it does, and it has, like, cool opening cinematics and all that stuff that you've come to expect from games like this as well. But Dark Envoy is an RPG that takes place in a open world uh, where you've got multiple objectives you can go after, where you play a brother and a sister who are treasure guardians. They're treasure guardians for post-apocalyptic kind of uh, loot that's been left inside of ruins from a conflict past. The technology inside those ruins was used to kind of like end the world in a fight between factions. So in this game, there's kind of like these Groot looking guys and elves. They're like allied. And then there's humans. And obviously because humans can't ever get along with anybody... A conflict was brewing. Humans in this game, they can use magic, but they do it really, really poorly. And so humans actually are kind of like the gnomes in this game. Uh, they are the technological race that invents things and tinkers and learns how to harness magic as objects and devices rather than direct fireball casting guys. And so the two factions, humans and the elves and Groot guys, had a giant, like, world war. Uh, humans created all kinds of wild technology that effectively, like, left the place a ruin. And then in the ceasefire, all of the technology was kind of, like, locked up that was too dangerous for public consumption inside these ruins. And now the humans are responsible for guarding those ruins and making sure nobody gets into them. And so we are 
both treasure hunters and also kind of like treasure protectors, I guess, inside the context of the game. And so it's a very, very interesting universe that reminds me a little bit of something like Final Fantasy VI, where magic and technology are not so distinguishable from one another. Like, they're both kind of the same thing on a certain level. I'm thinking about, like, what other what other games I've played that also kind of have that vibe going on. Uh, I think, actually, Sacred... Which sacred game was the one that had the girl with the man maybe sacred 2 was that the game? I can't remember which sacred it was It was the one where you had like the blue ooze that was leaking out of the pipes that had blind guardian in the trailer uh, That one right there. Uh, that was another setting where kind of like fantasy and medieval stuff I felt like were blended reasonably well with technology and sort of like an explanation for what's happening Why it's happening where it's happening all that kind of stuff. This is a universe where magic and technology are kind of like seamlessly interlaced with one another. And humans are really good at one of them and elves are really good at the other. And that means that we don't really get along all together that well. And so this universe, from what I've seen so far in the intrigue, also has quite a bit of kind of like uh, racism between elves and kind of humans. They don't like each other very much. They don't, they don't really get along. My characters, the brother and sister pair, they are completely and totally customizable from the beginning of the game. I think we are super, super, super snared right now. I need to get him out of there, though. He's not built for frontline tanking. Uh, you do get to build your characters. The game has four classes. Each of those four classes has three subclasses that I've yet to get to uh, because you got to be level seven in order to get after those. Every single one of those classes has its own tree uh, with a number of different abilities. Those abilities, this is where it reminds me of R Clash Legacy, which is one of those hyper difficult RPGs that I don't think anybody but me ever played. Uh, but R Clash Legacy was also all about interactions between abilities. So if you look at these abilities that my characters have, they'll list all the synergies that they have. So if they have this status effect and you cast this, then this happens. And so learning those kind of like weavings of abilities and like those orders in which you should be firing abilities in order to like maximize your stun durations and maximize the amount of damage over time you're putting out is going to be a big part of this game. Very, very early on, you're going to be introduced to some fights that on the normal difficulty for me were challenging like one of them was a real thinker it was almost like a puzzle instead of an rpg fight and like it had me like thinking i was trying to figure it out uh you probably want to shoot that maybe did that get him it did get him a little bit good go ahead and block this walkway because my turret has collision and so he can't get to my shooter until he gets past the turret and i've got the sister built to be a protector kind of like a paladin character i've got oh no they're behind me yeah i didn't think about that Okay, well, she's got an ability that'll let her get through that barricade without too many problems, so I'm not too stressed about it. You go ahead and fire over there. You go ahead and use the ability to charge through the barricade and come assist him. Uh, this is a special type of fight called a reinforcement fight. Uh, basically, it's going to endlessly funnel enemies at me until... Uh, we've killed them all. That, that's pretty much it. That's the entire basis of sort of like these fights they come up from time to time there's not really any way to like predict them coming up you should swing over there yeah get that guy uh oh okay time for us to evac a little bit gonna have to kite around a little bit but that is gonna be a bit of dps lost we're gonna have to figure out some way to peel this guy off my shooter otherwise my shooter is just like hosed i may be able to pull back this way and if I do that just right, I can get some damage off right there. And then with her, I think our best bet is to charge back this way. I may have just made like a bigger, gnarlier problem for myself. It's kind of hard to guess. You get out of that, please. Uh, you go ahead and throw that at him. You go ahead and throw that at him because that combo right there will give you a stun. So that gets big dog off of us. Uh, we've got another guy coming in from behind. Luckily, he's caught up in, like, a whirlwind animation or something. So we'll just kind of, like, ignore him. But as you can see, this is actually kind of like a high micro game. Like, it's expecting you to do a lot of micromanaging. If you don't do a lot of micromanaging, you're going to have a bad time. Now, the game doesn't explicitly give you a whole lot of tools, in my opinion, to deal with, like, enemy aggro and stuff like that. Um, enemies kind of just, like, glomp on where they glomp on. I don't really know what to say about it other than that. And in fact, this is actually kind of like a really nasty uh, fight as far as reinforcement fights go. They're throwing some really, really big dogs at us right now. Uh, we're going to need to do something over here. 
to kind of like get this moving. He's been knocked prone, which is nice. So that'll be a little bit helpful. We're going to focus our fire on him a little bit. There we go. Big stun right there. My turret is now doing some tanking for us. She's got a tank ability that I just popped that increases her armor by like an absurd amount. Uh, we are going to need... Did she just get stunned? Please tell me she did not just get stunned. I really need her to tank this out for me. She's holding. Don't get me wrong. She's holding. Let's go ahead and ace that guy right now with a thrown axe. Uh, we got to get out of our little corner because there's AoEs going out. But the good news here is this will give us a little teensy tiny bit of time to recuperate because you do regenerate in combat in this game, which is really rad. Uh, but get used to this. If this fight looks appealing to you, this is the whole game right here. From the moment you drop, this game makes it abundantly clear that every single encounter is going to be a little bit of an MMO raid fight. Like, you're going to need to figure it out. And if you can't figure it out, you're going to get dumpstered really, really, really hard. Let's go ahead and stun him to peel him. There's the stun. Good. Let's finish him off. And down he goes, intense fight. Now, if you're looking at the fight and the mechanics thereof, you're noticing a third meter right here. If you're anything like me, you're like, what is that What is that third meter right there? Is that important? It is, actually. Uh, so you've basically got guarded HP and you've got wounded HP. Those are two completely distinct things from one another. Uh, so guarded HP goes first and it regenerates very quickly and a lot of abilities bring that back. This game does not have a lot of healing abilities from what I've seen so far. Uh, your green meter seems to only be healed of its redness uh, by very specific shrines that are like basically uh, techno healing stations uh, that will fix you up. But anytime your wounded HP gets hit after your gray goes down, some percentage of that is going to be permanently gone until you find one of those healing shrines or until you like go back to town, basically. And so a big part of this game is also in resource management. Every dungeon is going to have like a certain amount of those healing totems. And if you go through them haphazardly, you're going to have a really bad time trying to weave your way through the rest of the dungeon. We do have a teleporter down here, and it looks like we've got a magic chest down here, too. Uh, what is the storyline for what I'm doing right now? I'm looking for relics. I'm treasure hunting. Uh, so I got myself into trouble with a cartel. The opening of the game, so the dialogue in this game is done reasonably well. However, the storytelling is going to be a little bit disjointed and low budget. It's just the way that it goes. Uh, effectively, I got into a fist fight with a guy in the cartel. I'll just simplify it like that. We did like a treasure hunt. We came home. There was an altercation about what happened at the first place that you were scouting out. Uh, disagreements between parties. Things like that. Can I shoot him from right here? Don't do it then. Don't do it then. Don't shoot that. Just draw him back if you can. Let's go ahead and block off right here. This is not a reinforcement fight, so it should be a little bit simpler. Thus far, bosses and reinforcements are the two things that... Ooh, you go ahead and shackled me up inside the AoE zone. Okay, go ahead and use your defensive ability then. Throw that at him. And then... That's going to have to be good enough. Yeah, I'm trying to use the turret to tank. But, like, aggro, not super manageable right now with my party. The aggro kind of goes where it goes. And so I find that I spend a lot of time wheeling and dealing and trying to get characters out of trouble. There's also a cover system in this game. You can see these guys falling back behind cover. Uh, they will fall back behind cover because you get a 50% damage reduction to everything that hits you while you're in cover. Uh, so you definitely want to be in cover in this game. Being in cover is a really, really good idea. Uh, there's basically a never-ending cavalcade of things that the enemy is going to shoot at you, the things that the enemy is going to grenade at you and mortar at you. Uh, treat every single fight like kind of a mid-level Diablo fight. You kind of got to stay out of the way of all the mayhem. And if you start eating some of those red abilities on the floor... Uh, it's, this game is going to snitch real fast on the people that were wiping raids back in Molten Core back in the day when we were first figuring that stuff out uh, because they kept standing in red stuff. This game's going to rat on those people real hard. Uh, this game does have a randomized Diablo loot system with varying grades of loot. I've got it all stacked up inside of here. Your characters do show the armor and equipment that they have on. I'm especially happy with the way my character looks. You get to customize them to your liking at the beginning of the game. Different hairstyles, uh, different jobs, different beards, different earrings, stuff like that for both the brother and sister pair. There are four slots when I deploy into an adventure zone, so I'm guessing you get four or more characters. I haven't really gotten to that yet. I've been playing for a little while, but I haven't got any new characters yet. I get the feeling they're letting me kind of get used to what I have going on right now. And so, level ups, uh, very, very simple. Uh, you get some attribute points, and then you get some skill points. That's it. 
Uh, so my character over here is more or less built to hit as ridiculously hard as humanly possible. Uh, when you hit certain thresholds, you will unlock permanent perks that just give you a flat stat boost and does something useful. So there are builds to be found in here. Some of these things are shared with the random loot you're going to be getting in your inventory. So it may give you a little bit of kind of like a Diablo itch to scratch if you start playing around with it. Because it does seem like there's some build potential here. Uh, for her, her HP is holding out okay. I'll probably bring up her damage a little bit. Just ever so slightly so that her DPS is not something to be ignored. But, weapon skill plus one level, what does that mean? I'm guessing weapon skill affects probably her accuracy, because your characters can miss in this game, too. I've seen them miss a whole bunch, so I'm guessing it does that. Uh, but as far as skills go, as you can see here... Oh, maybe there's not a new tree for those. So there's four main classes from what it looks like. But I haven't got to set the specialization yet, so I'm going to have to look up whether or not you get like a full tree with each of these specializations. Or whether this just gives you a bunch of fat passives that help out with the stuff that you're going to be doing on this side anyways. Either way, I found most of the abilities to be pretty cool. They are all helpful, and they all synergize like in their own ways uh, that make things useful. For her, she's got two points right now. I'll probably just go like... I don't know. I think Frenzy Attack sounds nice. But also, I'm very, very explicitly using her as a tank. So I think Shield Mastery to get extra magic shield would be a good idea, too. Uh, for him over here, I wanted to do like a full-on pet build. That's all that I really care about, is I wanted to have turrets. And I wanted to have all kinds of fun things all over the place. And I don't really use Frost Ground that much. I do use Shock Bolt from time to time, but that does increase the cost of it. When I upgrade it, each time you attack with a ranged weapon, gain mana regen. This effect can stack. Yeah, let's go ahead and get that then, because I feel like he never has the mana to really, like, machine gun abilities the way I need him to support her. And since we are a team here, let's let that happen. Now, the game does support quick saving anywhere and everywhere you want to go. This is one of those healing shrines I was talking about. The rings on it, they actually use the rings on it as a representative UI for how many times you can use this. And so instead of doing the ugly thing, which is just putting a meter above it or putting, like, a number above it when I use this, one of those little rings goes away. And look, all of his red is gone now. That's very, very good stuff. I'm glad to see people like, it's amazing to me that Dead Space is such a respected title, and yet basically nobody implements all the cool ideas from Dead Space into their game. Like, Dead Space is like a master's class on showing people how to imply information just simply from context in like a satisfying way. And it always bums me out that so few companies like have taken that to heart. And have, like, dedicated themselves to that. This game does have a crafting system, so you'll notice when I'm down in the dungeon, occasionally I'm mining nodes. Or occasionally I'm picking something up uh, that looks like a purple sphere. Uh, those are going to be crafting materials. Uh, just like the game has Diablo loot, the game also has Diablo deterministic crafting. Uh, which means that you can sit down. Oh boy, that was a quick one. That was a hard one to dodge. Uh, you can sit down. Go ahead and refill her magic shield real fast. Uh, what that means is... You can sit down on actually what is a literal slot machine in this game. They actually made it look like a slot machine, which I think was a tongue-in-cheek joke about their opinion about Diablo. Uh, but basically, when you craft the gear, the stats on it are a little slot machine that goes pop it pop it pop it pop it pop it pop it and like they rotate around like somebody pulled the arm on a one-arm bandit. Pretty cool stuff. I like it a lot. And then from there, uh, you can curate what you want to come out of the crafting process. It's a good thing that this did not end up being a reinforcement fight because our tank is actually getting dookied on right now. Like, she's having a really bad time. Like, she needs to refill. Oh, it is a reinforcement fight, and we're not even at the beginning of it yet. Oh, boy. Okay. Man, this guy's a menace. Just a micromanaging nightmare to get rid of these big sword and axe guys. Wow, he's regenerating, dude. Hit him, hit him, hit him with something harder. Is he just, like, immune to damage right now? I'm sorry, but I'm not being implied. There's no action being implied right now by anything around here, so I don't know if I'm, like, getting absolutely smoked at the moment or, like, what's happening. You get back out of there. You get back out of there. You drop another turret over here to help out with aggro. There we go. 
We are definitely going to want to... Oh, man, this is a long fight. Okay, we're going to have to fall back. We're going to have to fall back. Use everything in your power in this game. Even if you have to be corny, uh, fall back. We'll let them deal with the turret. We'll regenerate a little bit. We'll get some health back. I'll probably use a charge on her. Oh, you can't do it in combat. Okay, I was trying to be corny right here. Normally, the game has allowed me a significant amount of corniness that I can do in my ability selections and whatnot and the ways that I choose to play with the enemy. Uh, we'll go ahead, and he's got like a shock thing right here. Actually, no, just put the turret down again. Right away. There is a strong chance that we may need to disengage at some point and just kind of like make things happen. Yeah, and if we can get that to soak up all their little gnarly bullets and whatnot. Especially since we're out of the respawn zone right there, which is down in that area. I find that a lot of fights in this game, they're a lot easier to deal with if you just fall back a little bit because it gives you a breather uh, from when the enemy is going to be crawling down your neck. So for this guy right here, what we want to do is we want to lay that down right there. I've got a painting tool that lets me shock people. There we go. And it'll also slow them down. But we do need to kind of like fall back a little bit. Uh, you go ahead and get your magic shield back. Let your HP come back a little bit. Go ahead and throw an axe at that guy. Go ahead and stun him. Good stun right in the middle of the fire too, which is fantastic. He's taking some damage. He's taking some damage. We've got him, like, trapped up right now. Wow, he just restored a lot of armor. That's a, that's a, that's a headache. That's what that, no. Selectivity in this game is quite poor, uh, by the way. I find that I am constantly fiddling with my characters and, and, like, not able to get aggro of the one that I want to get aggro with. Uh, yeah, go ahead and knock him down, I guess. We got no choice. He's not peeling off. Losing a character right now would be exceptionally terrible. Uh, everybody put a little bit of loving on him, fall back. He's doing the whirlwind thing. That's fine. Throw an axe at him. There we go. All right, so, like, one of the big threats is now down. I don't know where the rest of them are at, but there's going to be more. I've got this one. We need to be using her shield restore on cooldown, by the way. Uh, yeah, you probably don't want to stand in that flame right there. We're going to go ahead and hit him. He's knocked down. We're going to shock him. There we go. He's all nice and taken care of. But the game does have very lively, very active combat. I like it a lot. It does have fully voiced sections. It seems to have a sense of humor and is a bit tongue-in-cheek. Uh, so the human faction in this is called the Empire. And they're like these heavily clad, heavily militarized technological soldiers uh, that throw down effectively. Like that's their entire thing is that they have the coolest equipment and whatnot and the coolest gadgets and whatnot did that reset the fight or are these guys like a different pack i don't know i guess we're about to find out we about to find out we about to find out uh do that right there and then you lady fall back real quick yeah let them sizzle and pop for a second let them sit inside of there uh so there is some humor in this game as i was saying so the Imperial guys, every now and again when they die, they'll say something like, I only enlisted for the free college, and stuff like that. Um, the game definitely has kind of like a self-awareness about kind of like its low budget. And it leans into it, in all honesty. It leans into it. I've been really enjoying the game. I haven't enjoyed an RPG like this in a while. I, I think it has like that same low budget yet decent gameplay that something like the first Divinity had. Uh, not Divine Divinity or Beyond Divinity or Ego Draconis or any of those, but it kind of reminds me of not an early Larian title because the early Larian titles uh, sucked, and we're going to lean back into that later. Uh, but for right now, ooh, a Legendary Staff, huh? Not that helpful for me, but it is kind of spicy looking, so it looks like i got a teleporter over there. i got to go get some more relics. I should probably heal off some of this wounded damage too, uh, but basically... It reminds me of kind of like the original release of Divinity Original Sin. It's janky. Uh, it's obviously lower budget than they probably would have liked, but the stuff that's here is entertaining. I'd like a little bit more control over aggro and whatnot while I'm playing around with enemies and while I'm fighting them. Uh, that, I think that's the main annoyance that I've had so far, is that there just seems to be a real lack of aggro controls uh, so that I can keep everybody focused on this lady right here. I don't know if I want to fight from like right here. Uh, I guess we fighting from right here. It doesn't matter. Big dog's coming, whether you like it or not. You're going to want to throw an axe at him. 
But I don't have the thing to stun him for right now. But it reminds me of kind of like those middle generation Larian games uh, when they were still sorting out the kinks before they got to, you know, uh, big, 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 big dong Baldur's Gate 3. I'm going to see if I can stun him right there just to get him out of my hair. And then you fall back over here and help out with this. Uh, this is going to be another reinforcement fight, though. So, on a lot of levels... Yeah, go ahead and use your resistance ability. Uh, we kind of need to... Oh, I missed an AoE right there. Hopefully it wasn't a super painful one. Oh, good, it was a damage over time AoE. Not bad. It didn't have, like, a huge initial explosion or anything. Uh, go ahead and throw at him, and then you throw at him just to stun him down real fast. We're getting through the reinforcements right now. This game requires a lot of mental focus in order to make it work. Bro, I don't know where that guy's going. He's just, like, running away. I don't know if he's got, like, a health potion or, like, what game he's trying to play over there. But it reminds me of an early generation, mid-generation Larian game. I bring that up because anytime I cover a lot of RPGs on my channel, which I think is challenging in a lot of ways for first impressions uh, with daily uploads and whatnot, it's very, very challenging because like some RPGs don't really come into themselves until like four or five hours in, which is a big ask of a lot of people. And I've noticed that there's been kind of like this recurring subtext on a lot of RPG videos that a lot of people are putting out where people are just like, meh, why would I get this instead of Baldur's Gate 3? And the reason why I specifically brought up Larian and their kind of journey from making terrible games like Ygor Draconis and Beyond Divinity into making what is effectively a genre-shattering game like Baldur's Gate 3 has been a very long one. And I'm an elder gamer. You know, I've been around since the days where Larian's games were almost universally on the bargain shelf at CompUSA next to the mouse pads. Uh, they were definitely not on the same shelf as Baldur's Gate or Baldur's Gate 2. Divine Divinity was quite good, but Beyond Divinity was awful, and Ego Draconis was just like, foof, uh, absolutely terrible as well, as far as RPGs go. And then, you know, they came back, they produced uh, Divinity Original Sin. My point here is that Larian started out making little RPGs like this. Little RPGs that were swinging for the fences, uh, little RPGs that definitely did not have the budget to do all of the things that they wanted to do, but they made lemonade out of the situation instead of complaining and bitching and moaning about it. They put out their games, they learned from their learning curve, and eventually they became the titan that they are right now. And it all started with little RPGs like this one. Uh, a game that had a lot of heart, a game that did not have a lot of budget, a game that had very few employees working on it, and, and whatnot. And now you take a look and Larian has 500 employees and satellite offices all over the planet, and they have just recently produced the greatest RPG of all time. If people had not bought the bad games from Larian, things like Ego Draconis, and things like Beyond Divinity, they would have never made it. And I would argue Divinity Original Sin 1 is not a very good game. I would have argued that that game is super janky too. They didn't really have it dialed in until Divinity 2. Uh, but anyways, that's beside the point. Um, if people had not supported Larian through thick and thin and backed them up through their bad titles and also through their good titles, so the good titles being Divinity 2, uh, Original Sin, and also Divine Divinity, and the bad titles being Beyond Divinity, Ego Draconis, those guys, uh, they would have never been around to get the Baldur's Gate license that they got and produce that content that they got. And so that's my argument as to why... Even though Baldur's Gate 3 exists and everybody is unanimously saying it's the greatest game of all time and it's shattering records and going wild, that's my argument why there still exists room uh, in the world for many, many, many more RPGs of all budget sizes is because small budgets become large budgets when teams do a good job with said small budgets. Um, it's impossible to make something on a small budget that's not going to have some flaws on some level. You put any game in front of me that's beloved by all, I promise you I can kind of like, I can pick at it a little bit. Uh, I have a talent for it. But, uh, in the case of this game, I've been having fun with it so far. I'm looking forward to meeting more characters. I'm looking forward to having more fun. And so anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video too. Uh, I recommend Dark Envoy from the first couple hours that I've played so far. I have not been disappointed by it. There are little rough edges uh, in terms of like the storyline pacing and like the believability of the story. It, it's pretty obvious sometimes that they're kind of like ushering things along and making them go more quickly just to get to kind of like the next dungeon or, or like the reason for the player to go on their next adventure. But I have enjoyed the dungeon crawl aside from not really having um, any way to manage aggro. That's the one big thing that I would change is that 
I don't really mind the fact that the game does not have healing as of right now. However, I do mind the fact that ma the aggro is really, really a nightmare uh, to manage in this game. Let's listen to some dialogue. In the West, it's supposedly enchanted with a powerful primordial magic. Palace used to be obsessed with this thing. Then she's going to be really happy when we bring it back. Although, I do wonder where she got that intel from. You know, the elves have been looking all over for it. Maybe we should take it to them? Hmm. But Halas has never let us down. And with everything that's been going on in the city lately, it would be good to know she's on our side. The game is frequently going to let you know that you're at a storyline junction. That's why I let him talk a little bit. I, I feel bad for talking over that section because I was going to close out the video, but I forgot we hadn't talked about the choices. This game has branching paths in it. How relevant they are, I don't know. But I will say that all of the decisions I've made thus far, the game has revisited them later on. Like, I don't think I've made any of these decisions that has not come up in some way later. Like, there, there's always someone that, like, refers to it, or someone that comes to collect the debt, or someone that comes back to get revenge. I don't know if it affects things, like, on a grander scale, but we're going to give the ring to Hollis because she's the one protecting us from the cartel right now. And if there's one thing I know, it's that you don't bone the person that's trying to protect you from the cartel. The game also has quality of life covered. Uh, so, like, these are active UIs over here. Like, if I pick something up, look at that. It actively changes the value of my HPs and everything else. This is a feature that not even Diablo 4 has from Blizzard. Blizzard doesn't have this in their most recent title. And this is a bare, basic RPG feature that should exist in every title from the smallest to the large. A self-updating UI that just updates your stats when you mouse over things. And you can just watch them go up and down and figure out what the best fit is. The game has lots of quality of life. You can teleport around dungeons. Uh, once you complete a dungeon, the game clearly and loudly tells you that you have completed said dungeon. And a big icon will go on screen and be like, dunk, 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 dunk. And then you click big icon. Big icon will then take you back to the entrance and to the world map, which we're about to look at in a moment. So I had to leave the dungeon before it was done, but I saved before I exited so it won't be ruined. Uh, this is the world map, and this is actually a really well done world map. Look at the depth to that world map. I stared at this for like a minute, trying to figure out if certain parts of it were actually 3D topographic, or if it was just a really well bump mapped map. I still can't really tell, but it's a great game world looking map, and I've been playing for a couple hours, and like, I've only done dungeons like in this area. Uh, usually it'll give you like a main dungeon and like two or three supplementary dungeons and you're allowed to do like some of the supplementary dungeons but not all of them. Like they disappear as you do them because other people are claiming them or something. Uh, and then at that point you finally just go to the storyline one. And so that adds replayability too because on one run you might want to do two shorts. On another run you might want to do the medium dungeon. The dungeons that I've done so far have all had different tile sets. And they all appear to be decorated with care, like someone actually like gave a shit when they designed them. And so anyways, some cool stuff in this title, dude. I'm pretty happy with this. As far as low budget, like small RPGs from small teams go, they're doing a pretty good job here. And so I say check it out, dude. I think that given what they've got in this game on like their first attempt, I'd like to see what it looks like when they have a lot more funding later on down the line because this one jumped out at me. I'll see y'all later. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today we were checking out Dark Envoy. Tomorrow we'll check out something else. Thank you for hanging out with me, and that's about all I got for you. Bye, folks.